Hi, my name is Brian Silverthorne. I'm a business coach and I'm making this video specifically for those people who are responsible for the success of a small business. So that's for business owners in two categories. Those owners that want to grow their businesses and increase the profits consistently and those owners who might be getting their businesses ready for sale so they can make them more valuable in the marketplace. It's also for managers and executives who are fully or partially responsible for the success of a business and it could be for those people who are considering buying a small business or starting a small business. Now I've been a big fan of small businesses since I was very young. I first my first jobs were in small businesses, the local delicatessen, the auto parts store, the sporting goods store. Now I did have an opportunity to work for bigger businesses and factories. The money was great there, but didn't like the politics that well. I liked the small business aspect. And small businesses, quite frankly, are the backbone of this economy. And if we're going to keep this economy chugging along and get it growing, we need more small businesses and we need successful small businesses. As a matter of fact, small businesses employ more than half of the total workforce in this country. So if you back out the government employees, government agency employees, they probably employ, they probably employ about 70 to 75 percent of the of the private sector workforce. They contribute about half of the gross domestic product here in the United States. And in addition, small businesses and small business owners have a very high level of trust in all the surveys in the consuming public. So small businesses are the key to our success now. They're the key to our success as we go on into the future. And there's a way to make sure that your small business is running well, structured well, and growing consistently. And by the way, if you're curious about why I'm making this video in this beautiful gazebo that's right in the middle of a vineyard and a winery, I'll tell you more about that as we get toward the end of this video. So right now, let's get started on all the pieces and parts that go into making a very successful small business. Before I get started uh, talking about the information on this flip chart here, I want to tell you a little bit more about my experience with small businesses. As I mentioned, when I was going to high school and college, I worked for small businesses, but as life progressed, I had the opportunity to manage a small business for an absentee owner. I also worked as a salesperson and a sales manager for a small business. I also started and grew a small business of my own very successfully. And for the past 20 years, I've been working as a coach and consultant with employers who had anywhere from five to a few thousand employees. So I've been fully entrenched in the small business market. And as I said early on, I love small businesses. We need more successful small businesses. So I started out by talking to business owners just randomly and also those that I worked with and said, okay, you have a small business. Why did you decide to go into a small business or what do you want the small business to accomplish for you? And everything that they told me fit into one of these four categories. One is freedom. They maybe wanted the freedom to do the work that they were doing for somebody else in their own way. They wanted the freedom to spend time with their families. They wanted the freedom to explore other things in their lives and make their own decisions, but they wanted freedom. Secondly, they wanted a sense of accomplishment. They may want to build that business so that their family can carry it on or so that it makes the mark in the community or so that it can be a valuable asset to sell going on down the road, but they wanted to accomplish something important to them. Thirdly, they wanted some money. They wanted to be responsible for their own income so that they could enjoy the freedoms they hoped to, to create and do other things, travel, spend time with family, whatever it might happen to be. And thirdly, they wanted the whole thing to be fun. If you're going to do all of this, if you're going to work hard and you're going to express your freedoms and, and make accomplishments and earn money, it's much better if you're having a good time doing it. So they wanted fun. The unfortunate circumstance is most of the business owners I talked to agreed that this is what they wanted, but very few of them accomplished all four of these. And the primary reason is because building a business is a specific skill set and they had not either had the time or made the time or had the money so that they could learn and because of that they were kind of like driving a car that's not tuned up very well. It spits and it sputters and you got to 
have periodic maintenance and you get where you're going, but it's not a very fun drive and it takes you much longer than you should. So what I'm going to talk to, as I said before today, is about the pieces and parts that go together to make a smooth running business that you can operate and have freedom, accomplish things, make money and have fun in the process. So what do you need in general to do to accomplish these four things? Well, you have to have efficient and effective operations. And we're going to talk about how you get each and one of these, each and every one of these as we go. You got to have consistently increasing profits. You got to have growth. Nothing is static. Usually you either are shrinking or growing. And you have to have a quick and accurate response to the market if it changes. Like right now, our market just changed drastically in the last couple of years. Those businesses that were prepared did much better than those that weren't. So that's where we're going to get started. Everything I talk to, I talk to you about here from this point forward will be to help you accomplish these four things so you can achieve these things as a business owner. So stay tuned. All right, as I mentioned, there are a lot of pieces and parts that go into building a good small business. But if you're a small business employer, your employees are probably your biggest expense. They're also your biggest asset. They could be your biggest source of frustration. And even though they have all those three components, they are the number one key to your success. Your employees are the people that touch everybody else that you do business with internally and externally. And how well those interactions go are going to greatly affect the success of your business. So to have a successful business, as it relates to your employees, your employees need to be happy. They need to look forward to coming to work. They need to enjoy what they're doing. They need to care about the business that you're in and the products and services that you offer. They need to be happy doing their jobs. They need to be productive. There are some statistics that show that the average American worker only works to 50 or 60 percent of his or her capacity, and there are reasons for that. And it doesn't really have anything to do with the intelligence or skill of the employee, but we'll get into those things. Also, they need to want, to actually want, to help your business be successful. That means that they're going to contribute much more positively and much more consistently. They need to want to help you grow and succeed. And it all boils down to fit. You've got to get the right people that fit with what you have to offer and how you offer it and how you operate your business every day. So we're going to take a look at next at how you make sure you get employees that fit well with your business. Okay, so how do we find employees that fit well with your business, those that are going to contribute to your success? Well, it all boils down to the recruiting and hiring process. Now, to make this process very effective, it takes a little time and preparation, but once you have it done, it's done. And believe me, based on the conversations that I've had with business owners, Hiring the wrong person can be a very expensive and very frustrating process, uh, both during the hiring process and on into the uh, work environment. So you want to make sure you do it right the first time, or at least maximize your potential of doing it right the first time. So what are the things that need to be considered? Well, in the interview process, you're going to have to talk about how well they fit. So they need to fit the job requirements, the specific duties and responsibilities and results that you expect the person you're hiring to produce. They also have to be a good match with the purpose of your business. Why are you in business other than making money? What do you want to accomplish? What do you see for your business going in the future? They got to be a good fit with that. They also have to fit the values and the principles and the standards that guide your business. So they know if they're doing something right or they're doing something wrong or they're doing something your way. They need to be a good fit with that. You also have to have a management style that focuses on things that help people become successful as individuals because the greater the individual success, the greater the business success. If you have people that are successful on their own within a business, they're going to contribute to the success of your business. And remember, these are the people that want to help you become successful. So you got to have a management style that teaches, that coaches, that can mentor if it's needed, that can help the people grow as individuals and can guide them in the process of doing their work. So these are all the things that you got to think about and put together when you're designing a recruiting and hiring process. 
That's it for part one. Lots of great stuff, but there's more. Be sure to check out part two.